Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. I ask for before and after photos from subscribers of this gardening channel that's been around for about six years now. And uh, boy, did you guys go, go to work sending them. Uh, I probably have 80 uh, to, not, to 80 to 100 uh, different uh, sets of before and after photos. Uh, this is the first video from that. I'm gonna put them up occasionally. Uh, just walk through some of the uh, amazing transformations. I think there'll be like eight uh, in this video. So let's just jump right in and see some of your beautiful projects. Our first before and after was sent by Simon, and this happens to be in Nottingham, England. Uh, really beautiful, beautiful house here without any without anything else going on in this garden. But he actually uh, changed this uh, quite a bit. Uh, so we'll jump right in. It's just amazing detail. Got the, uh, the swing here with the vine growing over it. Just a really, it's a great looking space. Uh, there's a couple more uh, photos here. Uh, got the vine now growing up on the side of the house as well. Lots of garden art here. Interesting things uh, added. It's one shortcoming I probably have uh, in this garden here so far is that, you know, it's all about plants but you know those other those other things do tie it together benches and swings and garden art and you know interesting things you pick up you know when you're out and about in the world and then the last photo here the great looking uh, patio and again just little pieces of garden art pat you know containers another seating area uh, just even having you know a clock or whatever that is there on the wall you know it's just all all just super interesting and turned, you know, uh, of just an open, open garden into a really, really detailed space. Okay. We have a few from this one. Uh, this is uh, Andrew, and this is in Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, this is zone 7B. Uh, and again, most of these have some sort of thing up here saying that they've watched the channel for some length of time. He says, thanks for all the inspiration. Couldn't have done it without you. Uh, looks like you've got pretty good skill to probably, <laughs> probably do it without me, but uh, we'll take a look here. We'll jump to the next photo. Uh, and this is what he's done. You can see the shed's been cleaned up from what it was. Grass is put in. He's got young children. And so this is an important component. I always say, uh, you know, people would think I'm probably against lawns, but I'm actually pr definitely pro lawn with a purpose. So if you have young kids, if you have a dog, if you have, you know, golf courses and you know, all those kinds of activities that we love to do grass on, and I love to throw Frisbee and so on and so forth. Grass has a great use and a great purpose out in the world and, you know, with young kids. But he's made that back fence go away, you know, from the previous photo, so just buffered all that, and just sometimes just buffering some sort of hardscape thing, like a, a really rigid fence uh, can really go a long way to change a space. This, uh, uh, here's the front garden, and this is really a transformation. You'll notice these low windows. It is really difficult to landscape with these type of low windows like this. So you really can't get in there and put any tall things in front of them. And so what you have to do is what he did, which is kind of bring the height out into the middle of the front garden, created some additional bed spaces, and then kept the shrubs near the house low. Uh, so didn't have to end up blocking any of the house, but still created, you know, brought, you know, some different levels uh, in this front garden and again he's got that whole back garden for the kids to play in so he's got less turf uh, out here by the road the turf he does have is contrasting really nicely with the with the flowering things there's one more view of this this is the looking back from that fence in the back back toward the back of the house this is another difficult thing to to landscape with that set of steps the sliding doors you know just really you know not an easy space to uh to to design for uh, and I think he's done a great job here. You know, you can just see it's simple. There's some things along the fence going up past the shed. Uh, same thing to the left of the house. Uh, didn't block any of the house. Everybody can come out that sliding door and go play. Uh, and the whole, the whole space is just completely transformed. Okay, this one's from uh, Minchie. Uh, I don't, uh, I'm not going to have people's first and last names on here. It doesn't say where this one is actually uh, from, but uh, they said they've been subscribed to the channel in the uh, in, in, in the beginning of the uh, uh, of the email I received. Uh, you can see just a kind of a plain space. That tree is kind of wild back in the background. It looks like it had some things growing on it and this fence out uh, out toward the street. You see they got in here and cleaned up a portion of it. 
and then bam. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is really quite the transformation. You see how there's a bench down at the end of that path? I'd like to point that out. If you have dead ends, you know, if you have little turns and uh, off of your pathways and you're creating pathways that have dead ends, it's great to have benches. It's great to have bird feeder, bird bath, something that's a destination, you know, to get there if you do have a dead end uh, in the space. Uh, when I visit Ram's Garden down in Athens, you know, uh, any of the dead ends are all, you know, there's a bench or something. Uh, in those spaces, but you can see all this color. They definitely went with my uh, clown college <laughs> design theme here, uh, which which I love. Uh, another photo um, uh, with the uh, bench down at the end, and then this just looks looks so great. It's just a mixture. It's a mixture of, you know, I see that hydrangea paniculata, lots of flowering perennials. I see coleus. So there's some annuals, perennials, uh, lots of things being used, and I love those little lanterns. Uh, out there as well, the uh, edging for you know the curves in the turf as it goes back toward the back, just really, really a fantastic space. And this one we just have a small little corner unused space. These kinds of things are hard to mow, so I, I always like to come into these types of situations and put some sort of angular, you know, some sort of bed in that allows you just kind of to mow the grass and not have to weed eat, weed eat up in the corner. Uh, this is. Uh, photos from Eric and uh, Eric, you know, created a small bed out of this, used a few limbs that were down probably somewhere on the property and added uh, native perennials. This is, looks like mostly uh, native perennial mix. This was definitely earlier in the season. And then here we are later in the season. There's Leatris, uh, the, the orange flower is the Asclepius tuberosa or butterfly weed. And I think there's some other native uh, plants happening in here, but just took a corner that was unused and, and turned it into a little native pollinator garden. And it's a spot, little corner you don't have to mow anymore or think about, uh, and it has color and it, it's gonna definitely have native pollinators. All right, here's one that's right down the road from me in Durham, North Carolina. This is a south facing back uh, garden. And you can see that the water, this is actually their neighbors behind them. And the water is gonna come down that hill and that rock and kind of you know, there's a, uh, uh, an area down there co collecting water, but you can see this is gonna be a low spot. And so even though there's a place to collect the water, it's probably gonna drain fairly slowly in this kind of clay soil we have. And they've got a kind of a boggy area, and we'll show you how they solve that in just a second. I don't wanna butcher this name. It's T-H-U-Y, and if it's Vietnamese, I think that's Thuy. Uh, I, may, I may be wrong about that, but I think that's the pronunciation and for, the, for the Vietnamese name. So I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, but this, uh, so here, here's another angle uh, back into the uh, corner here uh, with, with nothing planted yet. Of course, the builder did manage to give them Bermuda grass, which they'll always have fun with. Uh, but here, they've planted a few things along the uh, back gate and then bam, you know, their, their dog uh, was in this, uh, this great photo of this pollinator garden. They've used some of the uh, uh, raspberry ripple zinnias that we have in our garden just to the right of their puppy there. Uh, just a great looking space. You know, just, you know, it's, you, you're not gonna be able to screen a house that's two stories above you back there in a very small backyard like this. If you use something that would be tall enough, it's going, you're gonna lose so much of your garden. So I think this is probably the way to go. It's just screen what you can screen. You could put a chair here and sit and still be in a little bit of privacy as, this, as, as things mature uh, just a bit more. Uh, and then here's the spot that was staying wet along the fence. And uh, they went with uh, using some of our you know, native hibiscus. Well, these are all hybrids uh, at this point, but hibiscus are just great. So rather than trying to uh, you know, reinvent the wheel and figure out how to drain this space and spend thousands of dollars doing it, they actually just planted an appropriate plant for that type of space. These native hibiscus don't mind at all if the uh, area's you know, slower draining or, or, or poorly draining, uh, it's just a great choice for that. And you can see how full and lush they are because they're getting the water they need frequently. I'll see these you know, native hibiscus or hibiscus hybrids planted in very dry areas. And they're definitely not gonna perform uh, like that. They said, unfortunately, their uh, puppy down there does like to uh, try to eat the bumblebees. And that's not unusual. Uh, Griffin does the same thing. All right, this one's really, really interesting. This is from Anne. Uh, she's 57 years old and her husband died two years ago and she has two acres uh, on this property. So this is a very large property. Again, it's up in um, 
Vienna, uh, Virginia, and uh, really, uh, it's already a beautiful space. You know, this area of Virginia is, uh, you know, beautiful without really having to do much to it. Uh, but she has she's done a she's done a pretty good job here. Of uh, so this is the front garden. I don't think this you know this steps back and we can't really see up close. But that that lawn definitely definitely is uh, looking looking pretty good uh, at this point. And again, what a beautiful area of the country this is. So this is a pool area in the in the back garden. It had absolutely nothing uh, planted around it, and she put this row of of hydrangeas along the uh, one side. We'll see another angle of this uh, pretty soon, but that creates a little bit of privacy uh, when you're in the pool uh, in that spot. And then she had this row of Leyland Cypress that she inherited. And, you know, it, it can, they, these things can be pretty stark. They can be just like a fence. Um, you know, they're just uh, almost unnatural looking uh, when they're lined up like this. And she came in here and added some additional trees, some upright narrow trees, uh, added the arbor down there at the end, which basically created a little bit of a room. Uh, and, you know, adding these things to the front of that Leyland Cypress hedge completely and totally changed it. It looks so much more natural uh, than it did before. And this, the, all of these things are working together to shade each other's roots, and they're probably all happier for having, you know, more things instead of less uh, in that space. Uh, big open area. She's planted tons of uh, Japanese maples, beeches, birches, sweet gum, spruces, ironwood, magnolia, clethora, hydrangea. There's a long list of things that she's added to this uh, property. Uh, and you can see in this view where some trees have been added out into this space. And this will be less maintenance uh, over the years, planting these shade trees. Uh, you know, into this two acres will, you know, reduce the amount of mowing. These beds will get bigger over time and uh, they'll look great in the future. Here's one more view of the pool and you can see the other end, how she's uh, landscaped that end of the pool as well. But just a great looking, uh, she's done a heck of a lot here and uh, it looks great. This one's really going to jump ahead a lot. This is early 2022 here. So this is only you know, a year, maybe 18 months ago, 14, 15 months ago, something like that. This is Stacy. Uh, she's, uh, you know, jumped right in. Again, these fences can be so, you know, so stark. They, they serve a purpose for sure, but then they can, you know, um, really kind of be very rigid uh, pieces. So it's, it's nice to, you know, to buffer them. Here's a little bit of progress. A few, there's a Japanese maple in there and it looks like a you know, some sort of conifer back there. Uh, and then, wham, <laughs> this thing is really uh, very, you know, this is really a great pollinator garden. I'm really happy to see all these pollinator gardens. I probably have, like I said, I probably have 80 emails from requesting this. And so many of them are pollinator gardens like this. And it's so nice to see, you know, it's, a, uh, it's it, it really is amazing. So, you know, there's a, uh, I, I really do appreciate um, you guys, you know, thinking about this and thinking about your gardens in a different way, thinking about them as a service, uh, you know, to you and to other creatures as well. Here's a couple photos from Scott, and I actually don't think that they put where where this is actually at. Uh, this was uh, about a decade ago when they bought the house, and then uh, really kicked into gear. Uh, this year and started adding things. Those are horse, uh, that's a horse chestnut out there or a Chinese chestnut, which is um, incredibly difficult to garden with. And they, you know, weeding, the, when you're weeding the beds or doing anything out there, um, you get those chestnut balls and they're like hypodermic needles, basically, when you're trying to handle them. Uh, really, really awful plants. Uh, to uh, to landscape with and you can see you know jumping ahead here limbed up on one and then the other one um, back there was cut down uh, and then lots and things have been added there's some daylilies in bloom uh, back in the background which you can see uh, a pretty good start uh, from that previous photo uh, again you know I always talk about being slow and steady with these things you don't have to conquer it all uh, in one shot but this one has really come a long way Thank you guys so much for sending in all of these great photos. You can send before and after photos to horttube at gmail.com. 
by sending them, uh, you're letting me know it's okay to use them in a video. And I thank, thank you so much for your participation and for following the channel for all these years. Thanks again.